I'm very pleased and, and actually privileged to have this distinct opportunity to share with you a few thoughts on the attitude of the Albanians during the Holocaust. Thank you particularly, Beth, for bringing me here. Since the end of the World War II, thousands of books are written and published every year on Holocaust, documenting truthfully those dark days when human behavior was touching its lowest point, when a whole nation, a part of humanity, was sentenced to death amidst a terrifying collective indifference. Yet, very few books and testimonies have been written about the story of saving Jews in Albania. Five decades of communist regime simply buried the story. Hopefully during the last two decades, things have changed, documents have been uncovered, rescued have brought to light their memories, and survivors have been identified. We do know more now, the world does, and events like this help shed light on our modest contribution to humanity. In the course of the last two decades, many dozens of Albanians are recognized as righteous among the nations by Yad Vashem. What makes the story of saving of Jews by Albanians a very particular one is that contrary to almost every narrative related to Holocaust, what happened in Albania has no grievance in it. It is not, as it would be by definition, about the death of innocent people in an effort to exterminate a nation. The Albanian story is, in its entirety, a story of courage, of respect and love for the other. It is a story of life and an example of pure humanity. If there was one single fact to highlight it, it is that the entire Jewish community, everyone, irrespective of their source of the class, age, country of origin, or any other distinction, education, those already living in Albania, or anyone coming from elsewhere, all were met in Albania with an open door, a warm heart, and were offered the shelter that many elsewhere refused them. The very simple fact, they all survived. Whatever the time, whatever the difficulties the country has been through, there is one thing to remember. There is no history of anti-Semitism in Albania. There is no experience of hate speech. There is no bigotry. Respect for others' religion, culture, and heritage has been a fundamental part of the Albanian society since ages, a value carefully transmitted through generations, something we dearly cherish and strictly observe nowadays. Albania was not the only country to stand up for Jews, but what makes Albania, the Albanian story and behavior unique are four very simple yet meaningful facts. Every member of the Jewish community living in Albania survived the Holocaust. Every Greek, Yugoslav, Austrian or German Jew who was lucky enough to get into Albania, either to stay or to go elsewhere, survived. No instance was ever found where an Albanian accepted any kind of compensation for helping Jews. And the fourth one, the most meaningful one, like in no other occupied country, Albania became a Jewish sanctuary a real guarding of Eden, and it had 10 times more Jews within its border at the end of the war compared to its beginning. I feel, therefore, proud and privileged to be part of a nation which stood in the right side at the right time and made the right decision to appreciate and protect human life. Tolerance, generosity, loyalty, and integrity as values rooted since centuries in Albanian traditions have always prompted us to stand for the other, to offer hospitality and shelter for those in need. It couldn't be otherwise for a nation which considers that the Albanian house is the house of the Lord and of the guest. There is no need for an imagination effort to understand that those times and years were dark for Albanians themselves. Risks were high, threats of life everywhere, and hiding Jews under Nazi occupation was simply a death threat for the entire family. Everyone knew what would happen if the Nazis were to know. Yet all this would matter little in front of a superior need, that of opening their house and heart to those without shelter, those and sharing whatever little was left um, with those hungry that of offering protection by uniting in strong solidarity. Christian and Muslim Albanians alike regarded it as a matter of national, family, and personal pride to help Jews, 
both native Albanians and refugees. Entire villages, very often composed of, very, of people belonging to different religions, knew everything about Jews in their midst, and no ever, no one was turned in. This is the very exceptional behavior of an entire society, whatever their social class, their origin, religion, or belief. Some have tried to explain the Albanian attitude as based on religious beliefs and tradition. Others qualify it as a behavior inspired by ancestry rules. For us, Albanians, it goes way beyond. It is a deep sense of pride and honor, a willingness to care for the other, a profound sense of hospitality to welcome, honor and protect at any cost, a guest or whoever in need, a timeless readiness to help with whatever available that explains such behavior. And for all of this, we have just one word, Bessa, the promise. You give the word, you keep the word. You promise, you deliver. It has been then and it is now. And if you knock on an Albanian door, you are not a stranger, you are simply a guest. Always welcome, treated with honor and respect. This is who we are. One last word. The world has pronounced many times never again. And yet, it has not been enough to help us prevent the worst to happen again. The terrifying stories of Rwanda, Bosnia and Kosovo, but also tragic events in South Sudan and Central African Republic openly question the world's ability to learn by past mistakes. We have seen too many times history repeating itself in its worst, and our first duty is never to forget. But when I see those young Europeans who, because of their unhappy, because they are unhappy with their politicians and frustrated by the way their country are run, choose to vote in such large numbers for the extreme right, we must ask seriously the question and seek to know where we are failing. Humanity will improve if we all individually will do so if we will continue to learn from past tragedies and for our, for, from our own mistakes, if we keep up the memory of the brave and never forget the consequences of hate, discrimination and indifference. That's why remembering is crucial. And I thank you.